Before we begin, I want to thank the sponsor of the summer series, which is Smash Boom Best. That's a free podcast for kids that helps them learn how to make strong arguments. Every episode of Smash Boom Best uses fun facts and the power of persuasion to help kids decide which is better between two amazing things, like flying versus invisibility or chocolate versus cheese. Look for Smash Boom Best wherever you listen to podcasts or visit smashboom.org. Welcome to a special four-part summer series of Truth For Teachers, where we are taking a break from all things work-related. Every other week in June and July, I'll bring you a short mini episode to help you focus on what matters most. And I'll share some things that have been on my heart that might be otherwise off topic for a teaching podcast. Let this be a short time for us to have together where we can reflect, think deeply, and go big picture. We'll explore a different word each time. Also, have you signed up for our special summer series emails yet? I have one written message for you that goes with each of the four podcast episodes. These emails are designed to be short, powerful reminders to help you stay focused on what matters most to you this summer and really enjoy your break. So if you want to receive those written messages from me, just click the link in the show notes for this episode. It's that little info button in your podcast app. So our word for this episode is alignment. What does it mean to live what you believe? I want to talk a little bit about lofty ideals and the difficulties that come from trying to live in a way that is true to our ideals when the larger culture around us doesn't support that. I think that there are a lot of things for us to be upset about or worried about or even angry about in the world right now. We see all kinds of injustices and things that we think are headed in the wrong direction, things that we think are going the wrong way. And a lot of times we feel like, how can I make a difference when I'm just one person? I'm going to talk about a specific issue that is dear to me as an example of of how to explore this issue. And that is conserving our planet's natural resources. And while I encourage you to draw parallels between this particular example and other issues that are really important to you, I do want you to consider this specific topic because I think it's important that all of us raise our level of consciousness about it. The reality is that the earth just can't sustain our current population growth, particularly as we continue to consume resources at the rate that we are and live our current lifestyles. There's just too many of us who are producing too much waste and putting a really great strain on our limited resources. The thing is, there's more than 7 billion people on this planet. And all of us are feeling like we're just one person. Some of us are deeply concerned about the environmental issues and others are not. But I think most of us wonder on some level, is my personal lifestyle really going to make a difference one way or the other? What difference does it make if I stop doing this one thing that I know is bad for the environment? Of course, if there are millions of us thinking like that, and each of us just changed one behavior or one consumption habit, the cumulative effect would be huge. But that line of thinking never really moved me to change my behavior. It always still felt like my actions would just be a drop in the bucket. It really wouldn't make a difference given the massive change that needs to be taken on a global scale. But here's the line of thinking that really changed my perspective. I've been considering lately that being more conscious of my consumerism is not going to single-handedly save the earth. But that's not the point. That's not the objective because it's impossible. I can't do that alone. The goal is to be awake, to be conscious, to be aware of the choices I make each day and make them mindfully rather than habitually, not just mimicking all the carelessness that I see around me. The goal is knowing that I am living in integrity, that I'm conscious every day of what kind of world I want us to create and know that I am trying to play my role in creating that world. 
to be honest, it's a lot easier just complaining about how lawmakers need to change regulations and provide more funding for conservation efforts. It's a lot easier to complain that CEOs of big corporations are the problem. They need to stop prioritizing their profits over the well-being of people. And of course, I think those things are true. And I think we do need to hold the folks in charge accountable. But things are the way they are in the world because people with a lot of power and money benefit from keeping things this way. So one of the most important things I can do is be conscious of how I am enabling them to operate like that. Am I spending my money with companies whose values are aligned with mine? How are my personal consumer habits making the world the place that I want it to be? This is where my power and influence lie in figuring out, am I living in alignment with what I say I believe? So I'm trying to just notice some of my habits that are out of alignment. For example, I find that I take a lot of things that are offered to me if they're free, even if I don't want them. So if someone offers me a bottle of water, my instinct is just take it. Sure, it's free. I'll drink it at some point. But every piece of plastic that's ever been produced is still on our land or in our ocean somewhere because it takes hundreds of years to decompose. If I take that bottle of water that I didn't really even want or need, I've now added another piece to the pile. And I just have been taking them just habitually. Sure, it's offered to me. I'll take it. That's something that I want to be more mindful of. I think taking things we don't need is a habit for a lot of teachers in particular. I remember going to craft fairs and festivals and taking all kinds of useless swag that was given away. Soda can cozies, ugly stickers and notepads that had corporate logos on them, that kind of thing. I figured I could use them as prizes for the kids or I don't know, somehow they'd be of use in my classroom or my home. So I would just collect this mountain of stuff that I never wanted, never really asked for, didn't have any use for it, but I'd taken it simply because it was there. It was free. Living in alignment with what I believe has meant moving more toward minimalism, questioning the things that I actually need to bring into my space. What are the objects that I want to surround myself with? What are the things that I actually need that actually contribute to my sense of well-being and my quality of life and what's just stuff? It's meant cutting back on fast fashion, you know, those cheap clothes that wear out quickly and need to be replaced fast. It's looking for quality over quantity in the things that I buy and consume. It's meant repairing what I have instead of immediately looking to replace things when they're worn out. It's meant questioning whether I really need something or if I just see other people have it or I'm using it out of habit. For example, I'm trying not to use straws at all and to avoid eating and drinking out of any single use containers. If I want to get a cup of coffee, but I don't have a reusable mug with me, I usually wait until I'm home to make a cup. And here's my line of thinking. If I'm not willing to inconvenience myself, or create discomfort for myself in this one small way, not getting coffee the second that I desire it, how can I expect corporations to change their practices? After all, if they change their behavior, it's going to mean millions of dollars of profit loss. The stakes are even higher for them really than they are for me and my little cup of coffee that I'm going to have to wait until I get home to consume. You see, these services exist because there is a demand for them. And if we as consumers stop demanding them, if we ask for something different, if we only spend our money on the things that are aligned with our beliefs, well, then corporations will change their behavior to conform to us. They'll stop producing this stuff. So the change starts with me. And this perspective is not about hard and fast rules. It's not about guilt trips. It's not about shame. For me, it's simply about consciousness, being aware of how my daily actions are in alignment with what I say I care about. The goal isn't to single-handedly fix everything that's wrong in the world. The goal is living in alignment with what I believe. 
And I don't have to do that fully for this to be a worthwhile pursuit because the very act of awareness is so valuable. It teaches me more about myself. It teaches me more about the people around me. And it teaches me more about how the world works. Here's what I mean. If I know that I believe deeply in protecting our planet, and yet I can't even get myself to live in full alignment with what I believe, well, that has big implications, right? Like, I still do use single use containers a lot. (laughs) And that's something that I really am aware of and I try not to do. So if I can't change myself as a person who really is deeply invested in solving this problem, then what hope do I have of convincing other people to change? People who aren't deeply invested in this. People who may even profit from the way our consumerist society is set up. People who are totally uninformed, have no idea. Or people who have life or death survival issues that they're preoccupied with, and this is just last on the priority list for them. You see, if I can have compassion for how hard it is to change myself, I can then begin to extend that compassion to others. After all, the only reason I have changed myself, my own behavior, is because of the thoughts that I have chosen to believe. I've chosen to believe that preserving our natural resources is important. If I chose to believe different thoughts, such as our actions as humans don't matter, or making money is more important than preserving natural resources, then I wouldn't have been able to change my actions. In other words, if I believe the thoughts that people recklessly polluting our planet believed, well, I'd behave the same way they do. We act in accordance with whatever thoughts we're choosing to believe. So when I understand this, I immediately have a plan of action. I'm no longer helpless. I can focus on what I can do to make the world better. How I can live fully aligned with what I say I believe. And each time I fall short of my own standard, it's a reminder to me of how hard it is for me to change myself. And that relieves the suffering that comes from feeling like the world is going in a terrible direction and no one can do anything to stop it. I can stop it by changing myself. The things that I would learn through the process of changing myself would give me insight as to why it's so hard to change others and why it's so hard to change systems. The process of changing myself is the foundation of everything. I have to confess, I'm still addicted to Amazon Prime. That two-day free shipping option and sometimes same-day delivery I can get, it's just so easy. Why go to the store for anything? But needing things shipped across the country to me at the fastest speed possible creates more carbon emissions and more packaging waste. And I'm supporting a company that made billions of dollars in profit last year, yet paid zero taxes. So I try to buy elsewhere when I can. And when I do use Amazon Prime, I will wait until I have multiple items and choose the option where the fewest boxes are being used instead of shipping everything as fast as possible. This is a compromise for me. This is not fully in alignment with how I'd like to be living. I don't know that I could ever live in full alignment with what I believe about environmental best practices unless I were to withdraw from modern society altogether. But choosing to do what I can Instead of saying my small choices don't matter, that's moving me toward better alignment. Noticing my compromises gives me compassion for the ways that other people compromise too. I know how hard it is to change behavior and live with integrity because I fail to do so completely myself. The anger that I feel toward others whose behavior I think is harmful, well, that anger dissipates a little bit and it melts into something that I can work with, something productive and useful. I know that my choices do matter and that each time I make the conscious choice to live with integrity and to live with what I believe, I'm coming into better alignment and I'm contributing 
to the millions of people all across the world who care about this same thing and are each trying to do their part in small ways, small shifts in their habits that can really make a big difference. I'm watching myself grow more into the person that I want to be. The process of examining my thoughts and beliefs is what creates greater clarity, not to mention greater understanding and greater compassion. So this leads me to my challenge to you about living in alignment. What's something that you feel like you need to do in order to preserve our planet, in order to take better care of the resources we've been given? And what's something else that you believe deeply? What's a core value that you hold or key principle about how you believe the world should operate? Think about whether you're totally living in alignment with what you say you believe and challenge yourself to take steps to do better. The goal is not to set up some standard of perfection that's going to be impossible to meet and you feel guilty about making wrong choices all the time. The goal is simply to move in the direction that you want and to observe how that process of change works, how raising your own awareness and your own consciousness creates a ripple effect where it extends out into other habits in your life and influences the people around you. I hope you'll find me on social media and let me know how this process goes for you. I want to hear about the things that you're trying to live in alignment with and what steps you're taking to do that. Next time, we're going to talk about authenticity, discovering your true self and living that way unapologetically. Before I sign off, I want to let you know that the 40-hour teacher workweek club is open to new members from now through July 15th. There are special early bird bonuses available if you join in June. These will help you get organized at home, map out your summer to make sure that you have time for everything that matters, and they'll help you get ahead for fall. The club has helped more than 25,000 teachers take control of their time and live with more intentionality. So if you want resources for that and you want a supportive, encouraging community to help, we would love to have you. Just go to 40htw.com or click the link in your show notes. Bye for now.